Hello YouTube, I'm Al Murphy, and today we're going to be doing another unboxing video. Uh, it's been a little while since I've got to do one of these, but uh, the last one went pretty well. You guys really seem to like that, so I figured we may as well uh, go ahead and do another unboxing video, which in my opinion should be pretty interesting. Uh, now, before I get started, I do have one uh, announcement to make. We recently managed to get ourselves some uh, business cards. Uh, I hope that's coming out okay on the camera because I can't obviously see what it looks like for you guys. But we have business cards now, so uh, I am going to be passing it around to people. If you do know me, I will happily give you business cards to pass out to your friends, just so that way we can kind of grow the community in a little bit of a more professional manner. Anyway, so for this unboxing uh, today, we're actually going to be taking a look at the Vindicator. Now, uh, strategically, uh, I was going over uh, what I had for points-wise in my army, and it turns out that we are actually a, a little bit off. Uh, so in total, we are actually not going to be unboxing one, but in fact we're actually going to be unboxing two Vindicator tanks. They're both completely the same. I'm going to keep them separate uh, when we go into the spray painting section of this video. Uh, but for now, I figured uh, before before we actually unbox it, we should take a look at generally uh, what they look like. This is what it's going to look like. Keep in mind, my stuff will obviously be red because I'm playing the Blood Angels. Blood Angels are red, so that's just kind of how it goes. And the way these guys work is they're essentially like artillery. They shoot for pretty long distance, uh, but they do need to be kind of close to you in order to be able to get the full uh, accuracy for them. And essentially they're able to insta-kill anything in the entire game. Uh, the only difference is they're a little bit weaker and they're pretty easy to avoid if you can uh, get into any sort of building. Uh, their weapons aren't always going to do the most damage, but uh, for the cost of points uh, for what they're worth, uh, it's actually very good, so that's why I have two of them. I also have two more tanks coming on the way, but I'm not going to tell you what that is yet. You'll have to see that in uh, that unboxing video. But uh, again, today we're just looking at these two Vindicators right here. And let's go ahead and get started with opening them up. Got ourselves some scissors here. So uh, currently my army, after uh, doing some review, uh, going to the game shop, because I thought I originally had 2,000 points. Turns out uh, we only had 1,580 points, uh, and while you could you could do a 1,500-point game, which is totally fine, uh, most tournaments are played at the 2,000-point level. Uh, each of these tanks are worth about 65 points, so it is possible that we might need more stuff after this, but hopefully not. Hopefully after these two tanks and the other two tanks, uh, everything will be just fine. Now, for the sake of uh, not making this video take forever, since these are identical, I'm just going to leave this box here for the sake of... Uh, well, no, let's put this box over here. It'll stand up on its own. Did I pick the wrong box to have on its own? Mm, maybe the other one would have stood up better. So let's just go ahead and brace that. There. There you go. So you can take a look at that, because we're not going to unbox both of them in the video because it's a bit silly to do two of them. Uh, if they're the exact same. So, what are we actually going to have inside of this box? Well, uh, I do expect... I've actually never looked inside a box for this before, but I am presuming that the box is going to contain, yes, exactly what I would need for tank stuff. So, uh, this sprue right here actually contains the guy, and we're going to be attaching a little bit of a machine gun uh, on top of the... Uh, Vindicator, uh, because that way it'll have a little bit of defense on its own other than its giant cannons. That's what this little sprue is going to be for. We have the main body of the tank. Uh, it uh, finally is coming, still main, coming in solid frames, so we don't have to glue big parts together. We're just going to glue smaller sections. And I'm actually very much looking forward to showing you guys how to build a tank. Uh, building tanks is actually much easier than building guys, because these tanks, uh, while it may seem nuts it's actually not that bad so here's the other half because there are two parts because you need the left and the right side of the tank like i said that there you go. so you guys can you so you guys can see what uh what it looks like and then we have the uh underside as well as uh there's also the sho shovel thing that we're gonna have and we also have the parts here to build cannon and then that's it gonna be what's it for that one and then, of course, we have stickers. I'm going to probably put these stickers on at the very end of everything after I've painted. And we're ready for just finishing touch details. That's what these stickers are for. So I will actually be saving these for a later date. But for now, we're actually not going to be using them for quite some time, probably. And, of course, it has the instruction manual, which I will definitely be following to make sure that uh, I get the most 
uh, out of it, and it's actually very well detailed, so that way I'm going to be able to build this with, uh, I don't expect very much problem at all. Now the question is, uh, strategically, are we going to want to put the missiles or the heavy bolter on the top of the tank? Because we can either do uh, the guy with the machine gun or the missile launcher. I'm not sure yet. I'm actually going to figure that out uh, as soon as I can. But that is actually going to be it for the uh, Vindicator itself. Uh, again, I'm really impressed with uh, this model itself. I really like the tanks. And uh, as you can see, you know, this is about how big the tank is going to be. Uh, it's going to be about the same size as our Rhino. Uh, the only difference is there is going to be that dozer blade in front of it. Uh, but otherwise, it's just not going to be too big. Uh, it's not like uh, a Land Raider because a uh, Land Raider is more of a heavy tank, which I no, I will not be using those because one, they're like ridiculously expensive. Two, uh, points wise, they cost a lot. And three, they're just a really big target and they're a lot easier to destroy than most people would think. So we're essentially going to make uh, two of these, which uh, is completely fine uh, for the sake of what we are going to be doing. And that is going to wrap up this section. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the spray painting. Of course, keep in mind that there will be double the sprues because this box will also be open. And you'll, so that way we're going to make two tanks essentially at the same time to be about as efficient as possible. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. Hello, YouTube. Uh, this is El Worfi coming at you for the uh, rest of the spray paint. Um, so... As you can probably tell uh, underneath, we did get a bit of spray paint that went through the first side. I wasn't able to record the first side because it was super windy and I just kind of needed to focus on making sure that it all worked correctly. So we got ourselves some new, oh, let me show you the bottle, uh, some Krylon Max uh, Ultimate uh, Coverage uh, Gloss. It's a gloss spray. And we're just going to uh, quickly spray over all of this. And uh, then once all of this is dried, we'll be able to start building our two vindic Vindicators. And I'm uh, really excited to get started on that. So let's go ahead and spray down everything. Very nice red. Very happy to see the color on this. All right. Trying to be a little more conservative. Uh, again, it's not as windy today, so less paint should be wasted. And uh, if you're wondering why it still looks like I'm using a lot of paint, it's just because it's a pretty, uh, you know, uh, th this I can't control how wide of a spray it is. And i got to make sure I get everything covered. And uh, I don't want to, like, have to go back and detail in red, even though I am prepared to do that because, you know, sacrifices to make it all look good. Okay. Let's go ahead and get all of this painted down as quick as possible. It is a bit runny, so I'm going to need to make some adjustments to make sure it uh, all catches on correctly. Because we don't want all the paint to be rolling off or uh, fading too quickly. Because that would kind of suck. Uh, yeah. I have a second bottle, so if it runs out, we'll go inside and grab a second bottle. Hopefully, I don't run out, though, because that would just kind of suck as a whole. Plus, I really like the way this uh, glossiness is going to turn out. Alright, let's get up and move over to this side. Again, we're just trying to spray as quickly as we can across everything. We don't really necessarily need to get every little bit. Technically, I don't even need to spray all of the uh, sides, but I find that it can help to just get every angle just in case, because, you know... You don't know what angle someone's going to look at your uh, rhino from, so you want to make sure it looks good on every side. And we might have to make uh, go do a second layer over all of this, depending on uh, how much runoff we get, because uh, this kind of paint won't necessarily stick to the models as much as other paint would but you know it's what what I could get I mean it was really cheap to get no reason to like I guess waste my money on paint that was a little more expensive when I could just easily you know I'm, I'm free to go over all of it again if necessary
But yeah, I really like these uh, tanks because these are, again, like I've said before, the uh, heavy artillery. Oh, better shake it up some more. <laughs> again, I'm really fortunate that uh, it's not windy today because when it's windy, it just makes things a little bit worse. And it's harder to paint. I mean, you lose paint when you when it's windy because the paint will start to go flying everywhere. And we don't want something like that at all. Because that would just be absolutely awful if we had to deal with that. Like, that's a good way to waste a lot of your paint is when it just goes everywhere. And then when it goes everywhere, then it's just not as fun. Uh, because then that means I have to go buy more paint. And buying paint isn't necessarily the, the most fun activity. Because I'd rather go around uh, building and gluing stuff. And I actually have something really special I want to show you. I'm not going to show you in in this particular video, but there's something I've been working on that I think is going to be really cool. And I, I'm going to suggest it to you guys because I think it's a very cheap and effective way to get, uh, get a good efficiency out of your models. Alright, well again, uh, it's not perfect necessarily, uh, we're going to do touch-ups on where I see there being a bit of uh, lack of red, because we're firing at a different angle now. And uh, yeah, it looks very, very glossy and very shiny, I like having shiny models. And so I'm, I'm, I'm loving the color, I like the red. I like the way it looks. It feels very good to me. I think it'll look great. Uh, oh, shoot. Didn't even get that piece. Need to make sure we spray that down. Because I was going to say, like, oh, where's the other piece for that? Okay. Well, uh, we're going to go ahead and let this stuff dry. And uh, since the other side is sprayed down, that will cover the end of this. If needed, I'm going to have to touch up on it. But I'm not going to bother you guys with the touch-ups. So... Uh, hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.